Hello. Let's talk about the threat of having to deal with the menstrual police. Okay, so before we talk about the menstrual police, let's talk about all the normal YouTube things. If you like this particular video, please click the like button and share it with others. If you like the work we do on this channel, please click the subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about what we do, go to forwardky.com. That's our home website. There you can see lots of great content by lots of contributors and other stuff uh, there. So I hope you visit it and check us out. So now let's talk about this uh, title, Menstrual Police. I'm sure some of you are saying, Bruce, that's just way over the top. What are you even talking about? So let's set some context. Let's suppose that you've got a law now banning all abortions, just like our lawmakers do in Frankfurt. All right, that's great. That gets rid of the providers of abortions, including OBGYN uh, doctors, many of whom are leaving the state now because of this ban. But it, but it leaves two loopholes. One is you can still order uh, medications through the mail and do an abortion in your home. And secondly, you can drive out of state and go to another state that allows per, uh, abortions like Illinois. So if you're a true forced birth believer, you want to do something to close up those two loopholes, right? So let's talk about the first one, ordering uh, medications. There's a law from 1873 called the Comstock Law. It was proposed by a man named Andrew Comstock, and I want to get this right. He was the leader of the New York Society for the Suppression of Vice, an organization that policed the morals of the public, and the law made it a crime to sell or distribute materials that could be used for contraception or abortion. It made it a law a, a crime to send such materials or information about such materials in the federal mail system or to import such materials from, from abroad. So note, it didn't only outlaw the means of abortion and birth control, by the way, but also information about abortion and birth control. Both were outlawed. And the law criminalizes the use of the mail system or computer systems in the conveyance of these materials and this information. Over the years, the Comstock law became, the use of the law became narrower and narrower until recently it's usually been used to prosecute child pornography. But when the Supreme Court tossed out Roe v. Wade, overturned the right to an abortion nationwide and threw the whole thing back to the states, a group of forced birthers began pushing to get the Comstock law back in front of everybody and began really pushing to prosecute people under the terms of that law. And J.D. Vance is one of those persons who is pushing for widespread use of the Comstock law. Now, you may remember that sheriffs, after Roe was overturned, sheriffs in some states began subpoenaing women's medical records from doctors and hospitals. And why did they do that? Because they could tell when those women became pregnant and if they stopped being pregnant earlier than expected. And if they did, then did they get an abortion or what? And can we prosecute them? In response to these invasions of medical privacy, the Biden administration last year put a rule in place that added all reproductive care records, that's birth control, abortion, and menstrual cycles under the HIPAA Act saying that they were, it was very limited how law enforcement could get to those records. A lot of people didn't like that. There were 28 members of Congress who wrote a letter to the Secretary of Health and Human Services when this rule was put in place, demanding that he withdraw the rule immediately because they said it prevented states from protecting fetal life. Now, 28, I hope you caught that number. There are 535 members of Congress, House and Senate, and only 28 of them had a problem with this rule of putting those records under HIPAA. And one of the persons who had that problem 
was J.D. Vance. He signed the letter to the Secretary of Health and Human Services. So there's a current day example of the menstrual police in action. Get the Comstock law enforced nationwide and women won't be able to terminate a pregnancy safely. They won't be able to even get information about birth control and their medical records, including their menstrual cycles, can be used by zealous law enforcement to track and trap them. But wait, there's more. What about going out of state to get an abortion? Obviously, if you want to stop all abortions in your state, you can't have women in your state traveling to another state to get an abortion, right? So how do you stop that? Well, once again, you start with their medical records. Has someone had a change in their periods, in their menstrual cycles? Have their periods stopped? Why did their periods stop? These would be the questions that the menstrual police would start asking. Let's take it one step further. Suppose the state required all OBGYN docs in the state to submit their medical records to a central state-run database. I mean, you can see this happening, can't you? We just want to be sure these women have the best health care and support we can give them. Combine that with delivery records from hospitals, and you've got a starting point for pregnancies that ended early. Why did they end early? Uh, would you mind coming down to downtown to answer a few questions? Now, if you're thinking this is all 1984-ish, but let's take it even one step further. Let's match up all those pregnant women whose records we have from the OBGYN with their car registrations. And then let's use license plate readers to see if they are leaving the state. Now, look. I know this seems crazy, but putting up bounties for people who turn in their neighbors who got abortions also seemed crazy until Texas did it. If the forced birthers in Frankfurt could figure out a way to stop women from going to Illinois, don't you think they would do it? If J.D. Vance becomes vice president and the Republicans take the House and the Senate, don't you think they're going to put the Comstock law back on the front burner and beef up its provisions? Using the phrase menstrual police is not a scare tactic. It is my way of calling attention to these threats to let people know that these are real threats and that we have to stop them. Otherwise, the fall of Roe will be just the beginning.